Hi there guys, um, this is Mesh with another video. This time I'm making a tutorial on how to make an ident. Um, this is not one of those big idents that I do with for the Mesh Does episodes because they are like 8-9 hour jobs. Um, so clearly I'm not going to do one of them, but I'm going to do a quick one on Vessel. I'm uh, doing a couple more videos for, on Vessel for my channel. And I thought I'd make a quick ident for it and film myself doing it. Why not? Because I know some people asked for a, for a tutorial. Now, I don't really have an idea. Sorry about that. I have a slight idea what I'm going to do um, for the ident, but I don't. I, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. So <clears throat> um, just be aware that I might be chopping and changing things and just throwing things together and seeing what happens. And before I start, I'll just let you know that I've got a triple monitor set up. So I've got a monitor on my left and a monitor on my right. Um, just so I'll be dragging in other windows from the side for After Effects and stuff like that. At the minute we're in Photoshop. And um, I've got this vessel background here that I'm going to be using as the main focus of the ident. What I like to do in my ident is that I like to replace the main character's face with my own. Um... It's just a daft little thing I've got. I don't know why I do it. It's just it's just funny. I think it looks hilarious. So I did that in the Walking Dead ident that some of you might have seen and a few other ones as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get rid of his face. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to get the clone stamp tool. And then you hold down Alt and press that. That takes um, the sample from that and then it'll paste it over the top. So when you paint there, where the cross is, it's taking, it's taking that pattern there. The reason I do that is if you just took the paintbrush being that smaller. If you just took the paintbrush it would take one colour and just paste over the top. You see how that's just a blank colour so it doesn't really look very good. So you want the clone stamp tool when you're painting anything out with its background. Then it kind of matches the background. It's not perfect but you can take a couple of different samples, a few lighter colours and paste those in there. Maybe something from over there. And you know you get that kind of idea like that. Actually I don't like that. That's a bit better. So it, it, it blends in with the background better. It doesn't matter about the, the, the blur there. You'll see what is happening in a minute. I'm going to save that over the top of what I've already got. I've got Vessel there. Then I'm going to drag After Effects in. Now I've already set up a uh, thing. This is a template file that I'm going to save in uh, Idents in Source. Right, These are all the saved for all the other Idents that I've done. So I'm going to call this one Ident-Vessel. Save it. Right, okay. So we're saved and we can do over that. So I have a template file that I use. I've got all the uh, folders up there. Now this one, I've already dragged in the mesh 0003 PSD, which as you can see here is a very large, ugly looking face. And you may recognize it. That's the raw version that I've masked out of uh, my face, which is in our logo. Now, I'm going to bring in the vessel um, PSD, which I've just saved out of Photoshop underneath that layer there. So you can see that. Um, that's probably about right where I want it at the minute. I'm going to scale down. First of all, I'm going to set the anchor point, that point there, down to my chin. Well, my neck, where it would be. So any scaling I do on that, it'll the center point is on my neck. So it just makes it easier for me to scale it down. So I'll zoom in a bit here. I can work the scale sliders in there, so I don't have to grab the little stupid handles every time. If I hold control, it scales slower, so I can get a more... Uh, refined control on it. That looks about right there, mm, I think, maybe, something. Now, obviously, as you can see now, the reason why I painted his face out was apparent, because bits of his face and his hair were sticking out the side. I didn't want that. So, that's why I've done that. Now, rotate. I might want to rotate it a bit. Something like that. I don't know. We can always change that later. Save it. And uh, what we want to go is go to Effect. We'll apply a colour correction and a tint to get it black and white. Uh, you can use levels, but I like to use curves quite a lot because you've got a lot more control. I'm going to introduce some contrast here. Uh, if you reduce the top bottom curve, it brings it, it crushes the blacks a bit, so you, you get more a more contrasted image. I mean, obviously, if you push it up, you see that the blacks go lighter. This is pretty simple stuff, but I want a contrast there like that. Um, actually, I might not want to do that. Um, Tell you what, I'm going to get the colour in first before I do that. I'm going to reset that. Get the colour in. So this is this background here, I want to match that. So I want red up. Uh, maybe reduce the red in the top there. Get some green in a little bit. Bring the blue down slightly. No. So it's, it's, it's trial and error in a way. Now I want to get the contrast in there. But I don't want to blow out the whites. See, if I blow that out there, there's just no detail left, so I want to keep that in there. Because I'm going to do a cartoon effect on it in a minute. 
which is quite a cool effect to have. Like for these, because this is the cartoon. It's a cartoon look anyway. So it'll match that. Now that's pretty... It's pretty spot on that, to be honest. I can adjust that later. I want to get some more colour out of the highlights there. But that's pretty pretty spot on. I know that's dark. So I'm probably going to darken this up a bit more. Um, you know, like that. That would probably match better. But I'm going to leave that for now. Because I'm going to put the cartoon effect on. Uh, stylize. I can never remember where these things are. There it is. Stylize cartoon. Right, now. <sighs> this is where it gets annoying. Because you've got, to, you've got to tweak a lot of different settings. I just, I mean, like I say, I'm a very kind of throw it in and see what happens kind of guy and I don't remember exactly all the settings on this because I don't use a set this very much but there is I mean I just tend to just move the sliders and see what happens I'm not a very precise kind of guy shading smoothness there it goes right that's the one that affects it so you've got that there like that and then you you can drag that a bit more so you, it's it's not a science it's it's more of an art <laughs> well I say art if you want to call sliding sliders up art it's not really is it but it's more just kind of slapping it together and seeing how it looks then you can adjust that and when you adjust the levels before it it applies those effects after the levels so if you would turn that off You've got the levels like that, I can bump down the darkness, and then when I bring the cartoon effect back on, it takes the new levels values into account, so it works backwards. So it'll apply the tint first, then the curves, then the cartoon. And so whatever changes I make to there, I mean, if I turn the tint off, it'll keep my original colour, which is quite cool. So that's the way of working in After Effects anyway. Right, so if I do that, I mean, I can change that shape there and stuff like that. I want to make it darker though, but it's it's too... There's not enough colour in it, you see. Sometimes you get there's not enough colour, but then see you can have it red like that. But then you have to bring the green up a bit more. So it's all very weird. Up a bit more. No, that I don't like that. I'm gonna undo that. There we go. Check about that. So if you zoom out see they've got that, but the face is far too light for the body, because the body is it's actually in silhouette pretty much so I'm gonna see what I can do with that so it doesn't really it's tough so what I can do is I can add another curves I'll undo that for a start I'll add another curves effect curves after it and then I can bring the bring it down like that you see you see and then if I can match the shadow of the face with the kind of shadow of the body I can kind of brighten that up a bit though no mm, yeah that up and then I can add another tint on because as you can see is the air uh, it's too colorful so I need to do that on like that there that's kind of it's kind of right I don't want it too white though so you've got more of a shadow under the chin there you see so you've got the highlights there so it kind of matches it a little bit better um, I might want to add a bit of a blur on it as well. Um, I put like a. I normally just put fast blur because it's easy and fast to render, but a lens blur might actually be a little bit better because those blurs on there look a bit lensy. <coughs> Although seeing that. No, that's not what I want. Turn that up. This will be too high. I just want to get an idea of what it looks like. But it takes a while to render. Right, uh, 25. Now, too blurred. Actually, lens blur is not really going to do much for us. I don't think. I think I was right the first time. I think fast blur is probably just going to be as good. Five. No. Fifteen. Yeah. Maybe. No. 10. I think it's probably best, yeah. 10 is probably good. Right, now. Uh, I'm not entirely happy with it though. It's too bright. Face doesn't look like it's on the body. I think it needs to be a little bit smaller. A little bit higher up, maybe. And we'll take it back. Just looks like it's slapped on, you know, which obviously it is, so that's probably why it looks like that. No, it's too small now. So it's a lot of just tweaking. 
So when you've got it pretty much how you want it, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, at least I'm not bothered about it being perfect because it's just a quick ident. I don't, I don't, I can't really afford to spend so much time on these anymore. So when you've got that kind of look, you basically want to then decide what you want to after that because I haven't really thought any far ahead at all. Um, so I would probably just have mesh does vessel, like not mesh does, but mesh solos. Uh, so I'd bring in the font. I like to match the font as closely as I can with that, but I don't really recognize that font. So I just put mesh solos uh, vessel and then I can scale that down to whatever. Uh, well, I'll get it so it's the same length, but I want to basically flick through a few fonts just to get something that's kind of similar. Not that, not that. That's chiller. Uh, maybe. Well, I'd, I'd basically get the line like that, and I'd want to basically squash it down as well. And then I would kind of see. I see how the lines are like kind of almost gone and in between there. I'd think about like having something like. I don't know how I'd achieve that effect actually. Uh, and just see if there's a. There might be an effect for all I know. Um, just need a. Is a sometimes a mat mat choker. Sometimes there's a mat choker. Yeah, there it is, mat choker. Right. See, see, guys. Sometimes you just stumble upon these things. I remember. I remember this from some the project I did before actually, but that's a, that's literally default settings are pretty much right. Really looked out there, so you know, it it appears to play around with the uh, with the effects and get used to what they are because uh, then in this situation I just kind of did remember I did a project once and uh, I had to choke a mat, uh, and that's obviously what it's called. You had to basically make a mat which had a, obviously a mat is like a an object which has a has a transparency. Well, obviously that's what text is. It's, it's just like an object that has transparency behind it, and it's called a mat. And you can use it as a mat for other things. That's what I was using it for before. And um, I mean, because I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I can use this as a mat, so I can go alpha mat, and then wherever I move the text, you can it reveals the layer underneath. So that's basically called use it. You use the text as a mat. For what's underneath, so that's how that works. Anyway, I'll have to not track my to turn that back. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I had to do that for a project once, and and I just remembered it off the off the cuff there. So anyway, um, now that I've got the text in place, uh, what I want to do is work out how I'm going to animate it. So I think I'll probably just bring it out of my eye or something. I tend to just do that. I mean, it's it's just an, a quick, easy way of doing it. It just needs to be a small amount of animation. So I just tend to just do that. I mean, I'm at least going to try it and see what it looks like. I'll get a null object in, um, and I'll s you'll you'll see why in a minute. Um, I'm going to put that on my eye. Then I can parent everything to it. So I'll parent the mesh does text. I'll parent the mesh face, and I'll parent the vessel background. And then what happens if I scale up the null? everything scales up with it. So it's kind of a way of grouping everything into one box, so whenever I move that around it moves everything. Um, and then what I can do is if I wanted to I can make another null which the mesh, is, the mesh and the face the face and the background is parented to but not the text. Or I can just move the text individually. There's a lot of different reasons why you would use a null instead of something else. But this way just means I don't have to individually animate everything like that. I can just do it in the one go. Now I should mention that this um, this ident is 12 seconds long on the thing. It's 30 frames per second and it's 12 seconds long. Um, I would never do an ident longer than 12 seconds maximum because no one wants to sit through an ident that's longer than 12 seconds. Um, even I only put. In fact, I normally do 10. I never, never don't really go over 10. Um, it's a good rule of thumb to do that because you can sit through 10 seconds no problem. Um, some people even want to skip that and that's fair enough. Um, but I have 12 there to give us a bit of leeway um, at the end uh, because I want, might want to move things across. I might want to 
move things across and add a fade in or have a, a half a second of black before it starts. There's, there's a lot of different reasons why doing that is, is helpful. And then in the end I can just render out just that section like that or whatever. It just gives us a bit of leeway. Uh, right, so with that out of the way, I can animate it now basically. So this is what I want it to be like in the end. Um, so I want to have that as my end point. So I'll set the position. If I've got position, P is to open up the position animation. That's how you start the animation. I'll show you that in a second. But if you hold down Shift and press S, it brings up scale. And then R, it brings up rotation. They are three main movement points. If I basically drag down there, it'll create keyframes for each one. So I know that the, it, at that point in time, at 10 seconds, it's going to look like this. Anything I do before it, I'll start at one second. I Anything I do before it is basically going to animate to that level. So what I'll do is I'll scale it right up. I'll move it in the center. I'll zoom out a bit as well. Move it in the center. Scale it even more. In fact, I'm going to rotate it a bit more. And then scale it. No, that's movement. Scale it. Scale it, scale it, scale it, scale it, scale it. Hold shift. Scale it even more. This might look shit. Because it's got 9,000%. I don't know. We'll see. Now, what I like to do now as well. See, you can see if you slide through, it's going to start animating. Now, it's not really... Not really right that. I don't want it to do that. I want it to be more centered first. So I'm going to drag it to there and move that note so it's still in the middle. And then see what happens. Ah, oh, and see, you see, that's too high. So it's too too much of a jerk. So if you hold Control and press that, it uh, it turns it into where shit. I don't even know what it's called. Keyframe Assistant. Rover Cross Time. That's where it is. No, it's not. It's something else. I can't remember what it is. But if you hold control, it turns into that keyframe and it basically smooths out the movement. Right. Okay, so we've got the keyframe scaled as we want it. So that's one way of doing the ident. If I play that through for you there, major deal. This is it playing there. As you can see, you've got a lot of motion blur on there and stuff like that, as you can, you can see here. Motion blur on the fluoro, for instance. If I turn it off and then turn it on, you can see what I mean. Calculates the motion blur. It just helps your eyes adjust uh, to to the moving image. It's just because it's the way your brain works. It interpolates stuff. If I turn on the motion blur for that as well, although actually sometimes that does strange things to the text. So yeah, I don't want to turn that on. Um, right. So that I mean, like I say, that's one way of doing the ident. I'm not sure I like that now that I've seen it. I know the animation could do with a bit of tweaking because it is a bit ropey. Um, you can see it blatantly changing direction when it moves there. But, and I could do it, but I've got enough of an idea to know that I don't really like it. So, I'd probably change it and do something else in some way. Um, and this is why I don't normally, don't do loads of idents, because uh, it's just, it's a lot of chopping and changing. It's just, I, I tend to not have an idea in mind, I tend to have a loose idea sometimes. And then just kind of work around it and spend hours tweaking it and changing it and changing my mind and whatever. So now I would just sit and think and just look at it and try and think how else I want to do this. Um, like for instance, yeah, actually, um, similar kind of thing, but I'll delete these keyframes. Um, the blurriness of the image can stay like that. And I would maybe scale this up. To like that. Oops. <laughs> Excuse me, got the hiccups. And I would move that up there like that. Uh, zoom out. Move that up. And then I would basically have the position that had started at 15 seconds. No, I'd start it there. And I would fade that in as it's moving. And then I would move it to maybe 5 seconds. Move it down to there. But then I'd have it scaled down over that time. So. Uh, I'll drag that. That's the scale I want it to start at. And then I'll drag it scale down. Uh, oops. Don't want to hold shift for that. And then the, I can move it across as well. I don't want the fluoro on this one though. Uh, I just want that like that. I want it moved across a bit more. Basically, I want to just scale that so it's fine like that. Um, 
Maybe move that down a bit so we get that other ledge on the right out of the way. There we go, that's a nice little... Hmm. Yeah, that's all right, that'll do. Okay, so that's that's framed quite well. Um, and basically just do that. Um, no, that's not right. Uh, if I press... I don't want to press F9, because uh, I did that before and it stopped fraps. So I'm going to have to right click and... How do I even do it? Yeah, there we go. Easy ease. There we go. And then do that as well. Keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then I can play that. If, but sometimes you want to tweak it, so you can press that button there. And it brings up the actual interpolated graph of those keyframes. So you can drag this out, hold and shift to keep it level. If you don't hold shift, it does that. To keep it level. And then you can drag that in there. So it creates a steeper curve but holds it, it keeps it slow and then fast in the middle. Oh, I like that, you see? See how that fast, I don't like that idea. That's not what I wanted, actually. Let's put it back to normal and see. Um, yeah, okay, let's see what happens there. No, I want that to start from an earlier time. I think that's the problem. Hmm, or maybe a later time. Depends what you want to do. It depends how you want to do because sometimes it, it's nice to have it scrolling up the body and thinking, oh, what's that? What's that? But the position, you see, I want to change the position. So I want to take that. That's the position line there. Um, I want to do an easy ease keyframe. And then when you do an easy ease, you get a line, you get a thing on that. See, so there's all the keyframes. All those tiny little dots on there are keyframes. And I can take this little pointer here and move, I can animate the actual line. The, the movement so I can have that curve around like that so when that animates it goes up and it curves around and then that no I don't like that idea see that there like that does does that but even then it's like what's that to move in I want to be able to see his full body as it pans up you see it's like your feet, legs, it's like he's got a gun. What is that? What is that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then it comes in vessel. Now, now what I'm thinking of is I'm thinking I might separate the vessel from the background. So what we can do is save this. We can go back to Photoshop. See, this is the where the ideas start flowing. And it's it can get awkward and annoying. But if I do that, select that. Um, Control and J makes it into a separate layer copies it. So it's still got the vessel in the background but what I can do is I can hide this layer, bring up the old tool again, clone stamp and just do a standard clone, uh, clone stamp thing on there, change the way that it's coming from because sometimes you can see the pattern, you can see that that's been patterned there, you see that there's that pattern there and that pattern there because I just took it from there so what you want to do is you want to take some from the from other places and then it basically makes a new kind of pattern that's not right though because that's a different colour. You've got to be careful of from taking it too far away from the original source because you can see that gets colder as it gets out of the edge of the map. Edge of the map, edge of the screen. So you've got that kind of thing. That, that's the kind of thing. No one's really going to notice that. I mean obviously you guys will notice now because you'll be like, oh, that's how we did it. But then you've got to realise that there's a sharp edge there now because it doesn't match in. So I can hide that. I can go there. I can go to filter and, well not filter, select, colour range. And I can select that, and it'll only select those text, and I can select the fuzzy range. So you see how it starts to come in there? So it gets rid of the square. Click OK, and it'll select the text. Then I can go to there, click a mask tool, and it creates a mask out of the text. Now, I can go into the... I mean, this is getting complicated in Photoshop, but try and bear with me. I can go then to masks and mask edge. See how it's created a sharp edge there? It's only 87%. I want to get 100%. If I hold shift and disable the mask, you can see that it's got that. I mean, obviously that sharp edge around there comes back, but it's smoothed out. So with the mask, I've lost a bit of the text. So when you go to mask edge, I mean, this is just getting anal now, but this is the way I am. I can shift the edge up so it includes more of the original image. I might want to change that so it's black and white. No. Reveal layer. On layers. Yeah, on layers. So I can shift the edge up, so you can see what I mean. But I, I, if I just shift that 100%, that's, that'll be enough. And then it brings the entire thing. So if I then disable the mask, you'll see what I mean. 
literally get the whole text, but it's completely transparent. It's just got a fringe of that original color, but because it doesn't matter, it looks like it's on a transparent background. So you've got a nice little, you've made yourself a nice little mat and you've separated the text from the background. Nice and simple. Well, I say nice and simple, it's not really that simple. So you can save that out. Maximum compatibility, that doesn't really matter. And then, what do you do? I, w I want to bring that in again. I might have to bring that in again. Go back to thingy, After Effects. Reload this footage. And then, I think it loads it as a certain, no, it doesn't. Um, I want to re-drag it in, actually. Uh, so I'm going to find this in me. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm on the other screen at the minute, just looking through me folders to find the vessel, original vessel PSD. And if I drag that in there, it should ask me, yeah, choose, choose layers. And I want to, I want all of them. I want all of them. I want all the layers. Well, I can bring in layer one and then I can bring in vessel again. And I can bring in layer um, background. So basically, I would then uh, drag this over the top. I would select that, hold down Alt and drag it, and that basically puts that in its place. So all the animations and all the effects would be still... I mean, I haven't got any effects on it, but any animation, any effects that are on there would just get applied to the new image. And because it's the same size and dimension, it just, it just fits perfectly, except without that on there. So I would then drag in layer one vessel and put it over the top and bring it there. That's a different size, though. Why is that a different size? I don't think that's a good idea. I think if I drag it in again, choose a layer, merge one, merge layer styles into footage, I'll ignore layer size. I want the documents. No, I don't want the layer size. Well, let's bring in the layer size, see what happens. I'm not very experienced in doing this. I've never really done much like this before. Let's get it on a full size. Right, okay, that's, that's proper size. I mean, it, it's not. I think it's because yeah, that's why. It's because it's bringing in thingy. I want it. It's because it's bringing it in at 100%. That's why it's not size. I need to scale that up <coughs> to 152.4 to match. See that? To match that. So it's the same kind of size then. And then I can parent it to the null. And then whenever it moves, it'll move with it. Let me see. Now, what I want to do now, though, is I do want to scale it individually, uh, bring it down a bit because I'm gonna move that across like that. I like I like what that's framed on. Um I like the way that's framed. So I I'll move that down a bit and then I can move mesh solos down. Make it smaller. No hold on a minute. Where's the effect that was on there? Why is that not choking the mat anymore? There it goes. Weird. I'll move that down. Get that back up there, a little bit higher. Bring it down like that, and then bring in the mesh solos down there like that. I know the mat. I know that doesn't. You can barely read the mesh solos, but that's fine. I'm going to adjust the mat. There we go. And then I can bring in the text, and the mesh does separately, so I can have its uh, transparency, and then I can animate. So I can put the transparency down to zero. Nope, that's okay. That's wrong. I'm sure some of you have spotted that. Mesh solos. Bring those down together. T for transparency. Even though it's actually opacity, but never mind. Um, right, and then I can bring it just a little bit further back. Um, actually, I want that forward because I want to set this down to zero and bring that further back. And then I can then it basically when I drag through, as it fills the screen. It comes in and fades in like that. Or maybe I could have it animate in as well. So rather than just fade in, I can have it animate the position. Um, bring that over there. So that, that wants to be the ending position. Then I can drag them along a bit like that. And then if I select those two like that, I can right click and go easy ease. So it eases them in like that. And then I can enable the motion blur as well. I'm not sure I like that actually. Um, no, don't like that. See what I mean about experimenting? Literally is. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's like if you can imagine it as a canvas and 
you're an artist, as pretentious as that might sound, you you just basically experiment. It's just bold practice. It's all learning. You're always learning. I mean, I I'm not, I mean, I'd make some good things, but I am nowhere near, you know, a professional. I'm not. I'm not a professional at all. I mean, I may do it professionally, but I'm not. Well, I mean, I, I guess technically I'm professional, but it's not. You can always learn, is what I'm basically saying. And that's gone the wrong way around, you see. I do stupid mistakes like that, so I want to drag those on that side. I want those keyframes there. And then those ones there. If you hold shift, they'll lock. They'll actually snap to the next keyframe down, so it, it's good for lining up things. And those, I want those to end at the same time. Let's do easy ease keyframe. Nearly pressed F9 there and stop the fraps. That would have been a devastator. There we go, and then we can play that. I had the blurs on later, so let's just ignore it. Let's just pretend it's blurring. So you go, oh, his feet, who, who's that? Who was that? Oh, it's Mesh. Wow, he's the vessel man, you know? I don't know, some bullshit. And, uh, I want to move these apart a bit, though. I don't like that. There. Mesh Solo's vessel. Pfft, I don't know. And then I can. I want that like that, but I want to turn on this thing again because I want it to be even more so like that. And then I want it to be a very slight zoom out. No, I don't want. No, I don't like that. It's horrible. I don't like it at all. See, I could sit and tweak with this for like ages because I've got. Sometimes I just have to go just right, and that's the perfectionist in me. So it's like, oh, feet, wow, it's like, oh, what, what, oh, it smash his face, wow, oh, he's doing the vessel, wow, oh, that's brilliant, wow, what what an awesome guy, you know, he looks cool with his little suit on and his thing, that looks alright, actually. I'm just saying, I'm like that. And then it comes out quite, quite slow. I mean, it's only five seconds, you see. I mean, this is real time, if you play it, it's like, oh, one, two, three, four, five. And then it just fades out afterwards. So it would only be a six or seven second ident, which is fine. You know, it's just very nice and simple. And I think I'll call that done, to be honest. It doesn't have to be anything, like, impressive. Like, you know, I mean, it's it's cool. It's good enough. It gets the idea across. It's me playing as the guy. And then it's Mesh Solo's vessel. That's, that's basically it. So the next step is we add on sound. So it helps if you have a nice sound bank. Um... I mean, I have a few. Um, as part of our partnership with RPM Networks, we have access to audiomicro.com. So we can um, access that and we can get all kinds of uh, music from that or sound effects or whatever. Um, it's not like... It's hard to find some good stuff. I mean, like any audio site, there's a lot of shit in amongst the good stuff. So finding good stuff can sometimes be like finding a needle in a haystack. Because there's a lot of people out there that think they're good at something and they're really just not. I mean, like me, I think I'm good at eye dents and I'm shit. I mean, look at what, look at the shit I'm churning out right now. Um, but you know, basically that that's just the case. So I do have on my hard drive a collection of different sounds that I've gathered over the years and from different sources and whatnot. And I mean, it's good if you can gather your own, or it's good if you can just get, you know, things from whatever. Uh, I'm going to rename that the No Sound. We get them from various sources. So that's Vessel, right? So I've, what I've done there is I've created a new composition with the existing composition in there. So basically this this is a new composition timeline, kind of, if you will. And inside that, it's almost nested. If you double-click it, everything's in there. It's like its own kind of little folder. So that's the entire composition on there. So what I can do is I can, I can actually cut that down. So I can put that there. That's the work area. And then I can trim comp to work area. Then when I go back there, it's only that long. Because that ident's only going to be about six seconds long. Then what I do is here I add my fade. Now, a lot of people just go... Uh, T, burr, one second. Make a new thing. Turn that down to zero. Fade. Done. Wow, look, it just faded in. Actually, that, that might be all right. Um, because it's just a simple ident. But what I tend to do is there's a few different like effects I've got. Um... I mean, video copa no that's not right uh, film transitions these are like presets that I sometimes use uh, these are basic what is it basic film fade in and it adds all these kind of weird effects to fade in and it just basically 
if you can see that, it, I mean, it's a very subtle effect. It, it, I mean, obviously, this is this is a bad example to do it on, but it just basically increases the. It just it's a different way of fading in, basically. And I think I'll leave that like that because it's quite cool. It takes one second to fade in, and then it's just so it's just got like that. Yeah. Next solar vessel, and then it would fade out. Actually, I'm not going to need to. Extend that composition to about seven or eight seconds, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll extend it to eight. Now the trouble is when you extend it to eight. Now you see that I've trimmed it before. Now it's it goes a bit funny sometimes. So it's always a bad idea to trim it early on. Um, that was a mistake that I made. You want to get it fine, and then you can trim it down after. Um, then I can take these keyframes, copy, paste. Right click, keyframe assistant, and time reverse them. And that fades out. Yeah, like that, and then. That's how it fades. I mean, that, that's a different kind of fade. It fades out the background first, and the letters are still left. So the highlights are still there. It's just, it's just more an interesting way of fading out. It's easier on the eyes. So you've got that, and then. That's, so that's the fade ins and the fade outs, right? And then. <coughs> I'm going to pick some sounds. Now, sound again, it's like designing, it's just. Um, you've got like loads of different sounds, so I tend to drag a lot of different things in and see what works and what doesn't. And it's just our experimentation, basically. Um, you just have to throw some things in and see what happens and what works and what doesn't. Design sound effects, I've got like a lot of ambient sounds, so like I can go. Do you recognize that? If you can hear it in the background. That's from the, uh, the main ident. Um, nope. Oh. Of course, yeah. VLC's crashed. Why wouldn't it? Yeah, I uh, get it. It's crashed. All right, and then you got. I'll t see. I'll take that in there. That sounds something that could work. I uh, need to get on the project. Uh, drag it into the sounds directory. Bring that in there. Open that up. Um... No. See, sometimes I can actually use. Uh, yeah, sometimes you can use the, uh, I'll use the audio from the game, um, that, that's actually a good thing to use sometimes, um, so I think I'll actually, I'll actually do that, so I'm going to end fraps now and I'm going to capture some audio from the game. Right, so I've got some uh, vessel music recorded here, I'm going to drag them into sounds. The reason is two is because Fraps splits the footage at four gig, so it's got like eight seconds of footage on there, and that's four hundred and thirty-three meg. In case you were thinking that, yeah, eight seconds of footage at night, ten eighty p is quite a large amount. So anyway, yeah, I've got just over a minute and thirty-two of footage here. Um, so what I would do is I would drag that, drag that down. So I go levels. There's a waveform. Okay, so <coughs> there we go. There's the music coming through. Right now, I'll render that into the uh, into the buffer so I can get an idea of what's going on here. Right, and here we go. All right. I don't need the video on. That's what's making it. So <laughs> I want the piano to come through as the vessel's coming through. So there's a the piano waveform there. So I want that to happen. And then, let's see. There. So that will then, if I press L for levels, I can have that. And I want to open up the waveform as well. And then I can have that fade out to zero. Or minus 40 decibels, which is what After Effects deems as zero. Minus 48. I would fade it to zero. But I want it on, oops, nearly pressed F9. Easy ease. And put that as easy ease as well. And then get that as easy ease. Get them all as easy ease. And then. Yeah, okay. Now let's see what happens. <laughs> It's alright. 
I think it'll I think it'll do to be honest. I mean it's it's half past five in the morning now, so <laughs> I don't think I'm just gonna call that done. Um I mean like I say uh with anything, with anything, I mean idents as, as well, you've gotta take into account time spent on versus gain that you're gonna get. I mean, I'm not sure that I'm gonna do as loads of videos on Vessel, but I did just record two hours of it tonight, so I'm probably gonna release that footage. Um all of it. I mean, I'm editing it down at the minute, and then I mean, obviously at the minute, that's you know, by the time this goes out, you've probably already seen a couple of them. But basically, yeah, I mean, it it it's. I mean, I've spent maybe I don't know an hour doing this. I'm not I'm not sure. It's only taking an hour. It's not that long. Um, if I'm going to get a few videos out of it, it adds to the to the you know niceties of it. It's better than just having the default logo in front of everything. It just ties ties things into, into, a, into a new kind of series, you know, so it just shows you that it's Vessel at the beginning, and it's it, it's just a bit of eye candy, and plus I mainly do it to keep my um, my mind fresh on all the applications, so I don't forget what I'm doing while I don't have much work in for it, you know, recession and all that. So, that's basically how to do an ident. I mean, I thought I'd record a few guys so you can see. I mean, that that's a very simple ident. I mean, you can you can go nuts. I mean, if you see any of the other ones, like the Dead Island um, ident that I did, I mean, I'm, I'm, that's one of my favourites. Um, the Alan Wake one, it took ages. I think that took like 14 hours or something. It was ridiculous. Had to do that in like two sittings, I think. Um, because, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, you can see in lightly here the how much time I've spent. Yeah. Like, I mean, I so just don't be afraid to go in and just experiment, you know what I mean? And just do that. And just do whatever you think is best. I'm going to trim the comp there. So it's nine seconds long. I mean, obviously, you've got to fade out. And then you've got a bit of silence at the end. Half a second silence. Um, and then this is the finished thing. There we go. It's a bit better. Yeah, right, okay. So I saved that. Then I go to composition, uh, composition add to render queue. Then I uh, have my own little things here that I render out. What do I do again? I don't even remember. It's been a while. This is why I do this. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. It's I do quick time, quick time, quick time, and I do JPEG, motion JPEG, spatial quality 100, maximum quality 100, and don't forget to take audio output. Click OK. Identifessel.mov. There are all the other ident's there that I keep, and then render. And then away it goes. Doesn't take long to render because, like I say, it's just basic panning and scaling and whatnot. So it renders pretty quick. Well, on an i7 with 16 gig of RAM. So that's my EP stretched for the video as well. So anyway, yeah. Um, hope this was informative. Um, sorry if I went on a bit. I'm probably going to edit it down actually because it's probably lasted quite a while. And there's the ping to say that it's done. You know, I mean, there's a lot of questions that you that you ask that can be answered by Google. So, I mean, you know, it always, it's always best to try Google first. But if you've got any comments or suggestions or questions, then ask away. I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean this video is a tutorial video, so if you have any questions, then just ask it in the in the comments, and I'll I'll do my best to reply. And uh, yeah, so thanks for thanks for watching, and uh, hope you learned something. All right, kids, see you later.